Welcome back, welcome back. This is going to be the management report. This is for activity four for unit 14. Now, this stuff on the left, this is known as the navigation pane. And this is something I will show you guys at some point as well. This is especially for people, um, especially useful for people who are going to be going to university, who are going to be writing reports for IT, engineering, computer science. Having what's known as styles and formatting is going to make your life a lot easier. This is a quick example here. So I've put a heading on everything. Now, the way this works, you simply select the text you want and change the style. So I could right click on it and I could go to styles here and I could change it to whatever I want. The benefit of this is that when you have to insert something like a table of contents, it becomes very easy. So I believe in Microsoft Word, I have to go to references. Then I go to table of contents. You can click on the arrow and it will give you a few options, but let's just choose the first one for now automatic table of contents and when you go up as you can see it's actually created every single thing i needed for this table of contents from what i've done in this document this is going to be massively helpful to anyone um, doing any uni stuff but for now let's just continue so for activity four these are the headings that we need to have as i mentioned in the powerpoint the previous um, powerpoint method one and i have method two Method two is something I did myself. You don't have to follow either of these. If you can find a different way to do it, that's perfectly okay. So the headings that you need to have are hardware, software, network, and legislation. That's for method one. And I have a table and I would put each piece of hardware in here, for example, and keep creating more, uh, more cells. So the way you create a cell or create more cells, click on the very last one, or you can click anywhere to be fair. When you press tab on your keyboard, it's going to move across one. So I've just pressed tab, it's moved across. Look, my mouse is all the way over here and I'm not actually clicking. I'm going to press tab again. It moves across one. I'm going to press tab again and what's going to happen is going to create another row at the bottom and that's how you do it. And you can keep pressing tab for as many rows as you think you might need. That's how it works. For method two, I've done something slightly different. I've said hardware and I've I have exactly the same heading. So I have hardware, software, network, and legislation. But under each one, I have the three subcategories I have to speak about. So for every single piece of hardware, I'm going to come back and copy this. So let's just say for argument's sake, my first piece of hardware is um, mobile phone, right? I'm going to put mobile phone here. I'm going to answer all these points for mobile phone. Then I'm going to move down here. And maybe my next piece of hardware is going to be laptop and i'm going to answer all of these for laptop so i could even maybe put laptop here for example let's just do that and let's do this one let's do mobile phone make that bold as well and so on and so forth but there is no right or wrong way to do this once you have all of these headings and all of the subheadings and again the main headings you need to have are hardware software network and legislation and under each one of those you need to have appropriateness of solution or just appropriateness is fine as well. Alternative is fine and rational is fine. What I've done here, I've used my second method because I think it's a little easier to read. Now I will show you exactly how I could use the table method as well, but let's just quickly go through what I've done. So I've said again, my main heading is hardware for this one. And the hardware I'm going to be speaking on is the laptop. And I've just put the specs of the laptop here quickly. I don't think you really have to do this for this section. Once you mention the specs inside of appropriateness or inside of rationale, then you should be okay. But I've just put it there. Overkill, I know. So I've said for appropriateness of solution, a laptop computer would make doing all the admin work, the owner and the manager have to do much easier. And I say, let me give some context as much as possible. Um, it's going to be easier because even though they can use a mobile phone, they can use a tablet to do everything. Having a laptop makes it a lot easier for typing massive documents or creating contracts or printing stuff. It's just a lot easier overall. The hardware specifications are good and, and most components modern enough to allow them to run all current and future software they might need without any slowdown. The hardware specifications are not overkill for the task at hand and should allow for years of operating system. OS means operating system updates to work fine, as well as having the ability to have certain components upgraded if needed. So RAM and SSD capacity. So I've said we have eight gigabytes of RAM. We can always up upgrade that to about um, 12 or 16 gigabytes in some cases. SSD comes as 512. We can always update that to one terabyte, two terabytes, whatever we need. Uh, decent screen size as well. So that's for appropriateness 
of the solution for the solution now please keep in mind that your solution is going to be different for your scenario this is again whatever i think this was a 2021 past paper or something along those lines your scenario is going to be different you might need 16 gigabytes of ram for yours you might need two terabytes of ssd storage for yours but let's read it the alternative I've said an alternative for me would be a desktop computer with an Intel i7 13th generation CPU dedicated graphics card. And I mentioned a, a NVIDIA 3060 GPU here, one terabyte of SSD storage, a 24 inch monitor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, Windows 11 Pro, and all the peripherals needed for the operation of the PC. This computer would remain stationary, but would be significantly more powerful than the laptop chosen. This power would allow for better multitasking, which is going to be beneficial in some cases. Uh, reason being, more multitasking options you have. You can open more applications at once. I can have my Chrome tabs open. I can have Word open for creating my contracts. I can be printing stuff. I can have Teams open and it won't slow down as much. This power would allow for better multitasking as well as being able to get more operating system updates in the future as the hardware is more future-proofed compared to the laptop. There is also the ability to upgrade all of the hardware inside of the desktop. Now, to be fair, it doesn't make sense at all for me to go desktop when i've seen what the company needs the best thing to do for this scenario again i only went desktop to show the complete opposite way i would simply do a more expensive better specification laptop so rather than saying um, intel i5 i would say intel i7 and i might do 12 or 13th gen it doesn't really matter we're on 13th gen now as of 2023 I would do maybe 16 gigabytes of RAM and I would make it DDR5. I would do maybe one terabyte of M.2 SSD storage, maybe not SATA storage. That's fine. Windows 11 Pro is fine again. But the alternative you choose should be something relatively sensible to what you've actually chosen so that you can give a decent reason why. So let's just imagine I said desktop here, but I can actually get a laptop with all these specs as well. So let's just say for argument's sake, I turn this into a laptop. Now, finally, I have a rationale for solution. So what is the reason or the reasons for me choosing the Intel i5 laptop over the Intel i7 laptop? So I said the laptop offers portability. Now I'm just, again, I'm going back to the desktop one here just so I can answer what I've done. But again, the, uh, the laptop offers portability, which I think would be a benefit in today's world. The owner and or manager could work from home if they so choose. Taking a desktop home would be very hard or difficult or laborious for the average person. Then I said, though powerful, the desktop would be overkill for the tasks the computer will be used for. The application would run much smoother, but the laptop meets the recommended requirements of the software being used with power to spare. So let's just say for argument's sake, every single piece of software I have to use, I went ahead and I looked at the specs. Some software said it needs one gigabyte of RAM, one said it needs 256 gigabytes, one said it needs one, uh, sorry, two gigabytes. I've made sure that the PC I've bought, I'm using or I've chosen has way more RAM than what's needed by every single piece of software. And I've said the extra power would be wasted. That's one reason. Choosing the laptop allows for more of them to be bought on a relatively small budget. The desktop would cost significantly more money without having the ability to be portable. This would mean people would have to come into work to use a desktop for simple tasks. Now, even though I said I wouldn't really choose a desktop, a desktop is a, a viable option. There are still many companies around the world today, most of them in my opinion, which have desktop PCs in their offices instead of laptops. Desktops typically tend to last longer, easier to repair, easier to change out, easier to upgrade. It just makes a lot of sense. So again, look at your scenario and whatever decision you've made. So let's just say for argument's sake, you've chosen an Intel i5 laptop with the specs I've mentioned here. If it makes sense for you to have an alternative as a desktop, then use desktop. If it makes absolutely no sense to have a desktop because maybe people work around the office in different places every day and they want to have portability, then obviously don't use a desktop. Use a laptop with slightly better specification. So here I have software and now I've used the table method instead of the paragraph method. Same thing, nothing different really. So for this one, I'm using Microsoft Teams as my thing I'm going to mention. So I've said Microsoft Teams is a feature pack service which allows for voice and video calls to take place on a range of devices, meaning Windows laptops, iPads, mobile phones, um, any smart device that you can think of, you can probably install Microsoft Teams on it. 
files can be shared it also allows for groups to be created this is very important because uh, i haven't typed everything here i'll just explain it quickly important because it mentioned that um, we might want to set um work rotors which you can also do from microsoft teams uh, so the manager or the owner can go in and actually create the rotor for people on microsoft teams straight away it will pop up on their phones or the tablets or laptops whatever they have to show them when they have to start work when they finish work and everything so very very beneficial overall i didn't go into too much detail here because i think the first one the first example i gave for hardware was detailed enough does why do you think this was appropriate or how appropriate do you think this is microsoft teams will cover all of the communication needs of the company. So if they want to do a voice call with one person, that can be done. If they want to do a, a, a team voice call with every single person in a company, 20, 50, 100 people, I believe the maximum is like 100 now, that can be done. If they want to do a video call with one person, that can be done. If they want to do a video call with 100 people, that can be done. If they want to do a video call with 100 people and someone giving a presentation and they want to record it, that can be done. They can ask questions in a the chat. They can create specific groups for managers only, for... Um, the chefs only, they can create groups for the sharers or the servers only. You can do almost whatever you want in terms of communication with Microsoft Teams. So that's one of the reasons I would choose it. An alternative would be Zoom. Now, to be fair, Zoom offers more or less exactly the same thing as Teams. So you go into detail as to why you think Zoom would be a good alternative. It doesn't have to be Zoom. It could also be, I think Google has Google, Google Chat or Google Hangouts, something like that. Um, there are also other services as well, but I'm going to stick to these for now. The rationale for the solution, having both services makes sense as one might go down at some point. These things crash all the time, um, especially if people are having loads of meetings on like a Monday morning, they'll just be very slow or they'll crash or your network might not be able to handle it at the time, whereas another service might be slightly better. Teams is overall a better solution as it ties in nicely with Office 365 and OneDrive, also SharePoint. Anything Microsoft, it will tie in very nicely with. Teams offers better security as it is linked to the user's Microsoft account. Account management would be controlled by the owner, if he so chooses, or by the IT person who comes in. Zoom will not have this as each person will need to manage their own accounts. That's not the only reason why I would choose it. Microsoft Teams just is an overall better service from a bigger company who's going to have better security, better features baked in, just a lot more polish as well. A lot more polish means that it's just designed way better because it has to cater for business people. Zoom really only came up and got really big over um, the COVID lockdowns. But before that, Microsoft Teams was always there. All lockdown did for Teams was allow them to add more features. The whole point I wanted to make in showing these, I'm not going to do any more, by the way, is you have to choose the thing that you want to talk about. So in this case for software, the first thing I spoke about was Microsoft Teams. The next thing could be, I don't know, Windows 11 Pro. Why would I choose Windows 11 Pro over Windows 11 in general? Windows 11 Pro don't quote me on this but go and double check but i think it does have um, more secure features in terms of encryption services built into the operating system and more apps and software as well for hardware i chose this laptop up here and again it's always going to be appropriateness alternative and rationale and rationale simply means why did you choose this over the other thing so the other thing would be the alternative. So why did you choose this specific laptop over the other one? Now, this is why I said to everyone, you should make a list of all the software and all the hardware that your company might need. Reason being, you will have to go through and create, um, not create a table for each one, but go through and answer those questions or those headings for every single one. So let me give another example. Why would I choose a wired fiber optic router or modem? And why would I choose a 4G, 5G router or modem? Well, the wired fiber optic is standard across the UK. It is typically very stable, typically very fast, and typically relatively cheap. I wouldn't say cheap, but relatively cheap, right? That's one of the reasons I would choose. The alternative of that would be the 4G, 5G modem. Or the alternative of this would be, instead of a fiber optic connection, I would choose a copper wire connection. So Virgin does fiber optic. I think BT does it as well. I think TalkTalk Talk is still doing the old copper stuff where the internet is not going to be as fast. That's number one. And potentially not as stable. Now, why would I choose fiber optic? I just mentioned it's very fast. It's very stable. Now, why would I also have a 4G, 5G modem? Um, because just in case Virgin's internet service goes down, I am not allowed to connect to the outside world. 
a 4G, 5G router or modem is going to be very useful. I would choose a company like, let's say, uh, EE. Um, EE is actually owned by BT. So there's BT that owns EE, Orange, and T-Mobile, I believe. So BT now owns all those companies. So I would choose that one because they're the biggest UK uh, company in terms of mobile coverage. They cover 99% of the UK pretty well. If it's not 3G, it's 4G. If it's not 4G, it's 5G. So something will work. So I want you guys to think about every single piece of hardware that you have. You're going to have to do this list here. So the, alter so the appropriateness, the alternative, and the rationale for every single piece of hardware you have. So this is where the research comes in. This is where you have to make sure that when you do your research, you have good alternatives. So for example, again, my printer was a Canon MG7550. I could have gone with the Canon MG, I'm going to make this up, Canon MG1000. Why not go with the 1000? It's double the price. It prints pictures in exactly the same quality, double the price. That means it's a bit quieter and a bit faster. But am I going to pay double the price when I can actually buy two printers for that? I can have multiple printers in the business. So again, have a list of all the hardware. Have a list of all the software. The relevant legislation as well is going to be exactly the same thing. And one of the things with legislation is that you there's going to be no real alternative the alternative of not following the Data Protection Act is that your company is going to be highlighted potentially for not following the act. You could get sued if your data gets out there. If people don't follow it, your company is going to lose reputation. There is really no alternative. And the rationale is it's a part of the law. Any company that holds people's data, they must do this. And if they don't do this, they're potentially going to put themselves in hot water, let's say. One other thing you might have to do is for network. So again, it's hardware, software, network, and legislation. I actually put all of mine on hardware. So you might want to separate things on the hardware that fall on the network. And obviously, uh, fiber optic, internet connection, 4G, 5G. So let me go back to my list and see if I can quickly um, categorize things as network or not. So my list is here. So let's zoom in. So not network. So this is network. This is network. My switch is also network. My storage server is network. Smartphones, no. Tablets, no. Firewall, yes, because this is a hardware firewall. Wireless access point, yes. CCTV, not really. EPOS, no. Network cabling, obviously. Printer, no. Kitchen monitors, no. So go through your list of hardware that you've decided that company is going to need and decide what is network and just do a separate section for network. So again, the section should be hardware software, network, and then legislation, or any which way you want to do it. It doesn't matter which one comes first, but you have to have those four categories. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, good luck.